it's some uh, 11 minutes after nine, and Professor Kukwa, sorry, I'll bring you in, but uh, there was a, a statement from um, Nelson Roxon Dafia Mepo, who is member of parliament for the South Dai constituency, mm. also a lawyer. Mm. He is actually in court. Mm. He so can't even get him to serve. Him. He is in the Supreme he Court against Dr. Dr. Peter Pia Henning's appointment. Onto the and he doesn't know what to do as a commissioner. No, he knows so, what to do. So, so, so that is that, that, that point steps. that you make ah, about uh, no, yeah. you the due process being employed. And you're complaining. Ah, the other yeah, no, uh, MP. Thank you. So, yes. uh, the MP mm. Tolong, the guy, the please, one who was accused so, of stealing. So, so, yeah. so, yeah. They can't the, find him. If you can't find him as a lawyer, you don't know what to do. Don't worry. Don't worry. Relax, seniors. Relax. This one also says the Electoral Commission must not merely say it has cleared some presidential aspirants to contest. The EC must also state the grounds upon which it disqualified the aspirants. This whimsical way of conducting this process raises fundamental questions. Professor Stephen Kwekwa, sorry. This, this matter of Dr. Peter Pianin's appointment, and we've had a conversation on this platform before. You've written extensively on it. So really, not, not rehashing your position, but then again, we are talking at a time when there is concern and questions raised about the confidence, the trust, and also the neutrality of the electoral body that we are going into this election with. And with all the instances that we have seen over the last at least six to seven months, with a number of the exercises that the Electoral Commission has conducted, from the BVDs getting missing and some of it being found on the open market, uh, we've had one at least one, and somebody being arrested because he had possession of that into all the errors that we saw in the process of registration, the limited registration exercise, the tabulation of those registration numbers and the kind of software that were used, correct draw and so on. The electoral commission came, admitted, made changes. Then the limited voter registration, the voter exhibition exercise, we saw the concerns that were raised as well by the NDC. The Electoral Commission <coughs> came, admitted mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. some of it, indicating they had put some corrective measures in place. The NDC went on a demonstration on Tuesday demanding an audit. It's the only way to restore some confidence and trust in the commission, at least increase that confidence and trust in the commission going forward. Is the audit the sure way from where you sit to restore that confidence because of what we have seen with these errors over the period? Well, yeah, um, uh, sure, sure. Uh, look, an audit of a system leads to what we call a Pareto improvement. I mean, just about everyone is better off with an audit than without an audit. To me, the question that you have posed is a no-brainer. The difficulty we have in Ghana that continues to retard our progress is what I call political myopia. And by political myopia, I'm referring to the tendency of people and political parties to advocate for some reforms, some oversight mechanisms, some changes when they don't have power. But as soon as they have power, they actually go against the same reforms that they used to advocate against. So there is what I call some blindness to the institutional development that will move us forward for some short-term gains because we have power. Look, the MPP, the NDC, the chairman of the Electoral Commission, myself, so many others have at one point or the other called for 
an audit of the voters' registration system. That just makes sense because why would you want to go into an election without a good understanding of the system that produces the voters' register? People say, well, but you've seen the voters' register. The voters', the voters register is just an output from the system. On any given day, somebody can hit a couple of things on the keyboard and the voter register that you get will be different. So the, uh, seeing the voters register is not as important as an independent auditor auditing the system to have a good understanding of who has access to the system, what rights and privileges do they have once they go into the system, who can transfer people, and so on and so forth. Look, la yesterday, I was reading something from the media newspaper and Bolt, Bolt is this uh, transportation uh, hailing system in Ghana. They were supposed, when they are hiring drivers, to apply a control, which in the vernacular, they call it a liveliness check. That means you cannot hire a driver without seeing the driver in person and confirming that whatever picture ID that they are giving you is who they are. Check their biometrics and so on. Bolt refused to do that. And some hailer hailed Bolt and saw that the driver had a picture that was actually him. It was a lecturer. So the lecturer sued Bolt. In the end, Bolt has been fined 1.9 million cities for failing to do the liveliness check. The whole electoral commission, that is, we've put our faith in the electoral commission to administer an election that determines who governs us, has told us that it did not do liveliness check in Pusiga. And we are debating whether an audit is necessary or not. I mean, that, to me, that, 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 that I, I just don't even understand how we can do that, other than what I described as the political myopia. We don't think about the long-term interests of the country. Everything is about short-term, what do I gain? This is why, for instance, and going away a little from the topic, four years ago, I was saying that, look, you cannot disqualify the MP for Fomina merely because he wants to go independent. And people were saying, no, you can disqualify him and so on. They went ahead and disqualified him. Now, the MP for Formula, who is an independent, has filed for MPP, but everybody is silent. Inconsistency, lack of principles. That is what is driving us behind. Now, in the specific case that you asked me, you have all kinds of suspicions. People are talking about this guy has been appointed and this person has been appointed and so on. So if it was me as a member of the Electoral Commission and people had questions about my integrity, I will welcome an audit. I'll say, look, come and audit. Because I want to show to people that I have nothing to hide. If you have been appointed and people are questioning your appointment, and then you compound that questioning with this approach of, I don't want an audit, then reasonable people would conclude or assume that you have something to hide. And indeed, if you are a rational person, you would only resist an audit if what you are hiding is actually worse than what people think you are hiding. That is the only way it will make sense. In economics, they have something that they call market for lemon, and they, they use that to explain why if you are a genuine used car salesman, you have an interest in giving people warranty or asking them to inspect the car and so on. It is only a used car salesman who has something to hide. Who say, no, hello, I'm not going to let you look in the engine. Just buy as is. Then you, 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 you should have suspicion. So I do believe 
that an audit of a voter's register system is not something that we should ever even debate. It should be something that the law requires if our common sense does not lead us there. People sometimes say that, well, the EC is an independent agency, therefore it cannot be audited. I mean, that is completely false. The EC is a public entity and is subject to audit under the Constitution. Furthermore, when you look at Section 16 of the Audit Service Act, it says that the Auditor General can audit any institution, not accounts, but operational, uh, forensic, any type of audit, if it is in the public interest to do so. So people forget that in 2018, for instance, the Auditor General did an audit of the Electoral Commission and found that the Electoral Commission was selling our data to a private company. I think the name was Buy System. And Buy System would take that data and go and sell it to the financial uh, institutions. And the Buy System was supposed to give 20% of those proceeds to the Electoral Commission. This was in the Auditor General's report of 2018. And so it became a big cry. Everybody has forgotten about that. But the reason I'm bringing that up is to remind people that the audit, or, uh, the Electoral Commission can and indeed should be audited. The voters register can and indeed should be audited because there's a, there's a law that says all public institutions are subject to audit by the Auditor General and the Service Act also says in the public interest any type of audit can be done. Uh, the Constitution talks about audit of public accounts, financial statements, and so on. But the Audit Service Act expands that into operational audits, into compliance audits, and other types of audits. So uh, uh, it's my opinion that Parliament, for instance, can by resolution direct the Auditor General to either do the audit or hire another uh, firm to do an audit and because we are very close to the election I mean the scope of the audit could be very narrow so for instance uh, we could say well look they look into their systems see who has access see what rights they have see what privileges they have see whether any changes have been made by people who did not have authority and then look at the tra voter transfer for instance and see whether all transfers were initiated by the voters themselves and stuff like that. We can have a very narrow scope and give an audit firm perhaps one month. Within one month, complete your audit, make that audit uh, report public, give the audit back to the EC. The EC would have one week or so to fix the problems that are identified, assuming any problems are identified, correct the register, and republish it so that people can review the register again. So uh, my opinion on the debate is right. that we are debating something that we should not be debating. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the country, MPP, NDC, the chairman of the Electoral Commission, uh, uh, GoGo, everybody supports an audit. Their position on the audit changes when they have power. And you know, uh, why does it change when people have power? It's because when they have power, they think that the system benefits them. They forget that, well, you could go into opposition. Then the system will no longer benefit you. And then you start crying that let's do the reform. And reasonable people at that time can laugh at you that look, you have power for so long. Why didn't you make these changes? You capitalize on whatever loopholes were there to benefit you, and now that you are out of power, you are crying. Let us do principled politics, because Gandhi has said that there's nothing, there's 
no sin as egregious as doing politics without principle. And I have said that the biggest beneficiary of an audit will be the Electoral Commission itself because it signals that its members have nothing to hide. Second, there may be problems with their system that even members of the Electoral Commission may not be aware of because many of them are not even technically savvy enough. And most of what goes on in the systems are done by people who are not on the commission. So it is in the interest of the members of the commission to have independent eyes look into their systems. Third, the political parties shouldn't go into an election without an assurance, assurance that they are playing with the full deck. I mean, if I invite you to a game of cards, you have to be sure that I'm not <coughs> the cards that I'm using are not rigged in any way before you start playing. So uh, independence, uh, movements, congresses, right. political parties, they all should be interested in an audit. An audit harms no one. It, mm. it won't harm anyone. And it benefits everyone. Right. Look at Kenya. When they had to do a rerun of an election in 2017 or so, $500 million was wasted. That $500 million that was wasted could have been avoided if an audit was done of the system and many of the problems that later on became manifest could have been known. True. What you do by not doing an audit is you postpone the problems. You, you ship the problems into the future. So after the elections, people are now going to complain. There's going to be a lot of litigation. Nobody is happy with the results. We have to go to court. Mm. All of that really harms our democracy. And the position of the Electoral Commission has been that, uh, Professor Koko, sorry, the, the exhibition exercise itself is a corrective process. And so the errors being identified, in their view, are not new. And to the extent that the exhibition uh, was done, and these errors identified, it would be corrected. And I asked a question about whether after correcting those errors, there'll be a re-exhibition of the register. The Electoral Commission rep last week on this program said they are not going to re-exhibit the register after the correction. So that's the position yeah, I mean, they've taken. The, the, answer, the answer that they gave you, or the position that they have taken, tells me they don't understand what an audit is. The voters register is just an output of a system. If I go in there and I say to my computer, computer, print out the voters register on this date, the voters register that it will print will depend on all the processing that has gone into the, uh, the computer before that date, and then I'll print it. Tomorrow, I can go and change one parameter and if I print the voters register, it will be very different from what I gave you yesterday. So you cannot just rely on the output and say the system is working. That black box, that it's almost like voting in an opaque uh, uh, ballot box. You, don't, you, you, you can't rely on that black box approach. You want to go into the system to see how things get done to see who has access to this window, who has access to this file, and so on and so forth. Because look, it's not just the Electoral Commission. Even more complex systems belonging to nations, belonging to big banks, are sometimes hacked into by system operators, people who have been hired by the banks, and still from them. So when you have a system as complex as the voters register and you are resistant to an audit, you are only inviting trouble. The <coughs> errors <laughs> the errors that are caught when you have the voters exhibition gives you more reasons why you should do an audit. Because remember, the errors were random. You know, somebody went there and looked at his name and then found a problem. But of the 
15 million names that you exhibited, maybe we looked at 50,000, 100,000. I don't know how many people looked at. What about the rest that people did not look at? So, so just saying that you exhibited the voters register and when there are corrections, you make them and therefore nobody should be uh, excited or nobody should have concerns that suggests that you don't understand a system. Because if you understood a system, you would understand that merely because some errors have been found and corrected, in no way means that there are no residual errors in the system. It's like an audit. When we do a sample, we find errors in the sample and we correct those errors but what about the non-sample items? The non-sample items, we have no clue. That's why, we, that's why they call something a sampling risk. There's always a sampling risk. So not to get very technical, but commonsensically, look, if the, audit, uh, the Electoral Commission has nothing to hide, as <laughs> I think they should not have, then why resist, an, why resist an audit? Welcome it. When you welcome it, you send the strongest signal to people who are questioning your appointment and all that, that, hey, yes, I'm an MPP guy, but while I'm a commissioner, everybody can trust me, and if you don't trust me, I welcome an audit. But if people are saying MPP has appointed uh, you and blah, 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 and you go there and you say, oh, by the way, there's no audit. And to make it worse, the MPP people come in and say, if there's an audit, then the country will burn or something like that. Well, how should those of us who think about the country, I mean, there are people who just think about the party interest. Mm -hmm. How about those of us who think about the country? What should we think? I'm sitting there, I'm saying, what? How can people behave this mm -hmm. way when in opposition, they felt that an audit is necessary, and now that they have the power to institutionalize an audit, they have turned around and they are against audits. My head spins when these things happen. And essentially, the point is, you say it's unreasonable to maintain that, in your view, that audits are unnecessary because errors discovered during the voter exhibition exercise will automatically be corrected. On the contrary, the identification of such errors, rather, from what you're saying, strengthens the need for an independent audit to fully yes. to, to fully understand the source of, uh, and nature of the of the errors identified. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Who, why was somebody able to do a transfer when the system has been configured? said that transfers should not happen unless the voter is there. That is the control that you have in, a pla in place. It's a very mm. important control. Right. If someone is able to bypass that control, then there is a material weakness in your system. And that material weakness in your system, you need an independent eye to come and look at it to see how pervasive is that problem before we can use it to do an election. To me, this is just common sense. We shouldn't really be debating it. But we debate too many things because, look, we don't, we don't have principles. Everybody knows what the correct thing is, but people are just thinking about their interests. Hmm. Now, and you talk about bypassing the system, and the Electoral Commission did acknowledge what happened in uh, the Tamale South area and then that's leading to the suspension of the POSIGA. And that's the reference that you make. We'll hear from the Electoral Commission, the EC on the POSIGA one, because it clearly defines the point that you have just made, it, that they indeed acknowledged that, that there was a bypassing of the system to the extent that the officer there was able to get the ID cards of certain individuals. They identified 38 of them went into the system yeah. when was able to transfer their votes without the knowledge of these people because he said according to the ec he took their cards that he was going to take a loan for them and ended up transferring their votes 
Absolutely. Well, the buck should not stop with that person in Pusiga. There is some chairman in Accra who we have put there to ensure that these things are not happening. When these things happen, well, it's okay for the chairman to fire this person. But we too should be asking the chairman questions. How could you let this happen? And how pervasive are they? Let us look into the system because we can no longer trust you. You were not able to control your employees and your employees are out there playing with the system and posting people not just from one polling station to another, but in some cases they are posting them from one constituency in region X to another constituency in region Y. If that can happen, that's a bogus system. That's a, bogus, that's a completely bogus system. It's like if I'm a student and I've registered to take an exam, my subject is physics, chemistry, math, and then my results slip come uh, and they give me some grace in accounting and I have not done accounting. Who would trust uh, West Africa Exam Council if West Africa Exam Council did that? This is, to me, it's maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe I'm just too, no. I don't know, because some of these things shock me. And that's why I gave you the bold example that this is a serious breach. And the court fined both 1.9 million cities for that one instance. In this case, we are talking about multiple instances of this uh, transfer. And that's just one irregularity that I'm talking about. There are other irregularities. And then you, the person who has done these things, you say, well, I don't want to be audited. <laughs> what, what kind of country are we running? Professor Kweku Asari, and, and don't go away as yet. Stay with us. It's still part of the conversation. I've just gotten some information from one of our viewers. Uh, Jenny Kumsen Von D says there's uh, an accident just after Suhum. And it's a VIP bus that's reported to have collided head on with, with other buses. And that has caused some serious vehicular traffic on, on that stretch. So the police MTTD, if, you, uh, if you're watching us right now, this um, accident on the Suhum Road, so we understand it's quite serious. We cannot show some of the pictures, quite gory to say the least. So we'll be back shortly after this quick break. We continue the conversation because my guest in studio would, would take it up from where Professor Stephen Kwekwasari left off, really making a strong case for the consideration of an audit, which he says is the reasonable thing to do. But what do my guests in studio think? We'll be back shortly after this quick break. Stay with us. That uh, looks very absurd to me. And uh, <clears throat> I don't intend to be abusive, but uh, to make the point very forcefully, I think it's dictatorial to take that posture. Uh, because the constitution gives them the power but that power is uh, circumscribed by other provisions of the constitution is that proper education uh, just to tell people who have pointed out grievances which you have acknowledged exist and then uh, after after that, you say that's the end. We've affected the corruption. You have not seen them, and that's the end of it. Is that proper education of the people on the electoral process and its purpose? I mean, to uh, have blind trust in the mere Ipse Dixit of the Electoral Commission. I say, because that said so, that's the end. That's a dictatorial posture to take. And for me, others can have their views, but looking at this constitution in the round, that kind of situation is entirely outside the boundaries of the constitutional order put in place. Nobody, and I want to emphasize, nobody has absolute power that the tracks 
from the welfare and interests of the people under this constitution. That's a central requirement. And I'm sorry, in Africa, and particularly in this country over the years, people just look at power in absolute terms. I'm sorry. You look at the power conferred, and look at all the other coexisting provisions. They are relevant to the essence. So that's Justice William Atuguba retired, the venerable justice, former justice of the Supreme Court of the Republic of Ghana. And he has extensive experience in the electoral system in this country because he sat through these presidential petitions that we have seen. Now, welcome back to Key Point on TV3. But that's an interview I had with him two days ago on Ghana Tonight. But that's more of it on 3news.com. We're live on 3FM 92.7, also on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSV channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. Um, a number of your messages on this matter and the others that we've discussed, we'll get into it. But lawyer Pia Kubi, yes. so I mean, you being both a, an officer of the court and a, and, and a member of parliament mm -hmm. and having contested elections for the most part of your life. Yes. Now, the commission has admitted mm -hmm. to errors. Yes. And had indicated that they are in the process of Correcting. Correcting them. Right. The NDC identified those errors, some of some of the errors, and mm -hmm. even more. Mm -hmm. Went to them. If they requested a meeting, made presentations. The Electoral Commission says, we have corrected all the errors that you, you have identified. Mm -hmm. Would you expect that the Commission would at least show the NDC the errors that have been identified and corrected? From what you said. Oh, yes, uh, Abed. To be honest with you, I'm not even against the uh, call for uh, forensic audit. I'm not against You're not it. against it. But I'm against the process of the call. Uh, and, and somebody said, I demand. And I'm saying that that word is not available to you to use in a constitutional situation like this. Because the constitution has guaranteed the independence of the institution. So the best you can do is to make your propositions and try to convince them it is only them that can cause uh, either forensic or whatever audit. But uh, when I was in South President, I used to tell the General Assembly that uh, demonstration itself has no dividend. Because after the demonstration, there's nothing for you again to call for. But the agitation for demonstration, and that empowers you in your negotiation. I have always, I used to tell them, because when you are student leaders, you will bring the students on the street, you will demonstrate, they will send the police after you, they will come and beat you, you go to, you go to your um, uh, halls and sleep, and then air all your grievances are, uh, evaporate into thin air. You don't have any grievance anymore, because you have been subdued. So demonstrations necessarily will not bring you the dividends that you want. So what I'm saying is that let's try to establish a case before the IPAC that uh, it is important for all of us to have this and bring out your justification and the evidence. And I'm sure that everybody will listen to you. Indeed, in my particular case, uh, I've called for my uh, electoral register. I'm going to go through them one by one, one by one. Audit it yourself. Yes, I'm going to do the audit myself. And if I find uh, any irregularities, I will go to uh, Regulation 17, 18, 19 of, uh, of CI 91. And that provides me with the relief. I will use that and then call for, if I call their attention they, and they correct them, I would want to demand a copy of the register for my case. Uh, I have brought this irregularity to you, and then you have accepted it, and you, say, you tell me that you have corrected them. I say, let me see the corrections. And then that becomes the register that will be available for me to use. Mm -hmm. If they refuse, then my course of action will have matured. Then I rely on Regulation 17, 18, 19 to go to court and compel them to do uh, the need for. But what I'm saying is that let us respect the institution for what it is, because it's a constitutional creation and it has a constitutional support. And let us not think that we from outside can do anything 
in the constitution that the law does not allow us to so do. So in the instance and how things are played out, the in NDC presented the issues to the electoral commission. In fact, what commission, I heard from the, the electoral commission, commission was that uh, the commission asked for evidence of the irregularities and what I heard, I, you know, I stand for correction, and that the NDC refused to give them uh, the evidence they, they, they were relying on. And I think that is, if that is the case, that is also wrong. Well, but if the evidence is there for them to that. provide, let the commission also, uh, you know, respond to those evidence. Mm -hmm. I think that is very critical. Well, and if they fail to respond to that, then I'm showing the way that then we could go to court and even compel them. Because if you, the same law on, on which they rest to do their registration, the same law provides us with uh, regulations, uh, sessions that uh, give us opportunity to lodge a complaint and even subsequently even uh, embark on legal action for them to also respect uh, our, our evidence. So let's exhaust that. And I'm saying that uh, after the demonstration and you, the question you rightly asked, what next? And I'm bringing the uh, SRC scenario into it. Uh, there were times that people were prepared even to reduce the cost sharing. And I was trying to influence them that let's use this opportunity so that next year, and again, we could even have uh, stopped it, capped it with uh, uh, a rate of change. They refused. We went to demonstration and the police came for us. We went back and we paid the exorbitant prices. So in the same way, after the demonstration, everybody has gone home. So uh, who would just uh, pioneer the change? So I was saying that it is important to convince <laughs> everybody in that meeting that it's important for us to conduct the audit. And if it was so upheld, then we all will participate in it and make it better. But the way we want to uh, unnecessarily influence people and call names here and there, it doesn't solve our problem. I don't know, I don't think that everybody will like me, but I still will take what you give me even though you don't like me. You understand? Okay. So if I present the case to you, you don't like me as a person. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, yeah. But if you are in the position to, you know, respond to uh, my submissions to you, and you respond appropriately within the law, much as you don't like me, I, it doesn't matter as long as you have done what is right for me. Uh, it's the dividend that I require. It's not my friendship with you that, I, you know, is important. And this is all that I'm saying, that... Yes, if the person is not um, Wait, your friend you and he is time. somebody's friend, uh, it is not a friendship that matters. It is uh, the relief you're seeking that matters. As long as the law requires that he does that which you seek, let him do it for you and forget about the relationship with you or the relationship with others. But, you know, the EC at one point has claimed, and that's the reference that you make, that the NDC did not leave or show them the evidence of the errors as had been identified. But the EC has also been on record to have oh, indicated to that worry. they have I I just wanted... solved or addressed uh, all the errors. Okay. So then it begs the question as to which errors the NDC that the Electoral Commission is saying it has addressed if they have not seen or been given copies of those errors, is it not? Abed, to be honest with you, I if they have indicated that they have received any evidence and they went on one breath they saying that they have corrected them. I think this is double standard that I cannot support. But uh, granted that they provided some evidence of irregularities and they have resolved such irregularities. I will also uh, wish that NDC will ask them uh, for the evidence of the correction. In fact, they did. And yes. Last week and, on, the, on this uh, show, the commission representative says that they are not going to no, no, exhibit. No, 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 no. Uh, no. They are not going to exhibit is different from uh, bringing us evidence of the correction. So according me, to the, I'm the applicant. They, no, me, mm -hmm. I'm the applicant. I have brought evidence of irregularities to you. And you, you have corrected it in your, in your data. So I require a copy of the corrected version of the register so that I rely on that. So indeed, uh, did, uh, uh, did you request for the this is public uh, corrected document. errors? Did in you fact, request? In fact, just if, a quick yes. answer. In fact, if you look at the petition we presented mm -hmm. to Sam Oteti on Tuesday after the demo, I think point four or five is the call for the re-exhibition mm -hmm. 
Because, I mean, how in God's name do you tell me that you have done it? Where's the evidence? So you can trust. But nothing stops you from verifying. Okay. So, so what I'm saying it. is that they so, were right in requesting for a copy of that which uh, and the, uh, the EC says is a correct version. But the commission said they will so not they, give it to them. The commission said they won't give it to them. I don't That's believe that. If the, NDC if the, the NDC having brought the evidence and having been corrected and having established a new clean uh, uh, register and the people who made a complaint say we want a copy. But in any case, it's a public document. And indeed, under uh, Right to Information Act, they can invoke the necessary provisions under the Act and ask for a copy. If the AC refuses, they are lawyers. And my good friend he is very combative. He can find a way, go to court uh, on um, uh, Madame's orders and compel them to give. You see, so once even an administrative body refuses you what you are legitimately right in asking for, you can exploit the, the, the legal process in compelling whoever is, as long as it's an administrative body, to give you uh, uh, what you want. So it is not foreclosed. <laughs> And I don't believe that EC will say that uh, you having brought your evidence and me having corrected them, I will give you a copy of the correct evidence. You don't believe I don't believe so that. So you were told but that that was happening. Well, if well, if happened. I'm told that that is what happened, and I trust my friend, I trust uh, 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 Godwin, uh, EC will not tell him that I, I have brought, you have brought me evidence. And it is true, I have identified irregularities, but I have corrected them, and I have a new register and edg will say give me a copy and ec will say i won't give you you think that will be a case but the and you, you, edg will go and sleep but no, the, that will not happen so i don't believe that ec denying them a copy i don't i don't want to believe that even maybe my friend didn't even ask and if he didn't ask i'm encouraging him to go and ask and take a copy if uh, they refuse to give it to you you have other means and I was just suggesting that under the complaint sessions of the regulation, uh, you have a right. Or you can rely on those rights to get the court to compel them to give. But what would the re-exhibition really that you are against? Well, I'm not against. The, the re-exhibition. Please pick me right. Mm -hmm. I'm not against. What I'm saying is that whatever you request of a constitutionally created body, uh, you go through the law to request of it. But what I'm saying is that you cannot say I demand a copy of that because it's a constitutional body and it is, uh, it is not subjected to anybody's influence. And again, uh, the, 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 the right to what you need is also in the law. So you can also use the law. But I don't think that the demonstration was of any consequence as far as what you are requesting is concerned. So if you had gone there, as uh, EDG may have gone, and they have refused, energy will find a way to get it. And, and that is what I'm saying, that why was the need I for see. him to bring my, aunt, my nephews onto the street for some policemen to beat them up? Nobody, policemen did not beat anyone. Uh, no, no, it's possible. He's a veteran of the monster, even no, no. a student. No, 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 that. no. I'm, <laughs> saying, I'm sharing my experience with you, <laughs> and you take me. I'm sharing my experience. They will beat you. When they beat you, the last time we were on a demonstration, okay. uh, there was one, of, uh, one, one son of a former uh, mm -hmm. chief justice. He refused to go. We were on the streets. Uh, okay. They harassed us. We came back. But when we were in the, the, in the streets, the police came to the campus. And this guy who had refused to go, he was beating Miss Leslie. So I told I him that it was better we could have gone. Come we were. So, so Demonstrations don't solve problems, but not so always. You say in principle you are not. It, a it is part of the advocacy system. In, but let if me you have this. a better means no. of, if you have better means of seeking what I'm, you have. I'm shocked. No, okay. no, no, no. Well, in this fine. case, after that's the demonstration, okay. what? You will do the same thing that you ought to have done before the demonstration. This is what I'm saying. So in principle, you say you are not against the audit. I'm not against it. Okay. And indeed, and I, have told the you, I, have of told, the I have also told you that in my own private way, I am your also own, going your to own screen audit. and I, I ask for correction. And when they are corrected, you want to I, see I don't the have the correction. capacity to ask for the, the general uh, uh, register. But the register for my constituency, I will ask them to give me the corrected version. I if see. they refuse, I will use the legal means 
to compel them to give it to me no, because no, I'm entitled so to it. Be, be, because you are also part of the, the demonstration that that's enough is enough. I'm talking about the Progressive People's Party, for that matter. I, I, I am shocked. I, 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 I am in a state of awe that demonstrations are not necessary. Civil disobedience is recognized under the law. If you, if you, if you go to the history of uh, civil rights in the United States, when there were white only toilets and black only toilets, and people had to sacrifice and even risk their life for the laws to be changed, amended, for it to be responsive to citizens. You see, the, the animal we call democracy requires citizens to put pressure on the system to be able to correct, amend uh, the system. Here is the Electoral Commission that has taken a posture. A posture that is so negative. Alfred, when we entered the hall to present our document, uh, Tete, is it Deputy Commissioner, mm. had squeezed his face as but if you go for he you, had... You, you, you you no, 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 please, 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 please. No, I am, I, I am, I, no, 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 this you, is, I'm making, you need it as a prelude to a point. That is okay. I am so saying that the, the posturing of the Electoral Commission in dealing with people needs to be corrected. And I'm citing that as an example because I, you, the Electoral Commission is there for political parties to interact with them. I'm not your enemy. You can write to them. I, please, please hold on. Okay. So when you have a system, and look at the fiasco that happened yesterday at the Electoral Commission, it erodes the confidence that we are supposed to have in the Electoral Commission in the processing of elections. Look. The, the processes of the balls and paper and all that, was it not comica? Was it not comica that the Electoral Commission was not prepared to under, undergo a simple process let's, whereby let's you were doing a, a balloting? And look at the chaos that we dealt with. That, that is why, that let's is the on. same posture that they are holding in people asking for audits. So you have to link it back. Oh, we, I'm saying, saying this as a link to the audit. Okay. When I have come to you and I've shown you evidence of things that has happened under your watch with your people, their transference. Look, I joined, do you know why I joined the, uh, the, the, the demonstration? I was horrified that a district officer can sit in their district, enter the system, and make a transfer from other jurisdictions to his jurisdiction or another place. And I asked myself, what are the controls in relation to the IT system of the Electoral Commission? Then somebody comes to you and brings you samples of what you have done wrong. You recognize the samples and you are telling us that you have fixed the samples. Then you are asking them to bring you a truckload of material for you to do your work. That is your work. If somebody has gone to do a work to expose to you that there are deficiencies, there are flaws, in your processes. Then instead of you going back and accepting the audit, you are saying that, go and bring me all the deficiencies so that I'm not there to do your work for you. Yeah, we have, we have this I'm not there to do your work we for you. Alfred, I have come with a sample. I've come with a sample. I have done with my researchers. I have sat down with you. I have proved to you. I've walked through the process with you. You have not disproved the samples that I have brought to you. But instead of now, me making the argument for the basis of the audit, you are now jumping and saying that we should go and bring you all the evidence that I have so that you can take corrective action. Your job, you have been shown to be ineffective and inefficient at your job. And you have, you have shown that the processes with that you have, you, know, you need to close the loopholes. And in, in, in listening and, 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 and opening yourself up for the audit, you are rather holding a posture that the, my, my independence is at stake, my independence, and I don't have a right to send this to you. Look, we are going to compel you because you see the power of the people is stronger than your will, your individual will. You are our creation and you are there to serve us. And if we have seen that there are imperfections in the processes and the systems that you have, you should rather be grateful and thankful and do an internal introspection 
and do the audit situation and find out that if you can even discover more of what I have brought you. So in what sense do you say that you close doors, you don't allow people, and then you are saying that my demonstration means nothing to you, and that me raising the issue means nothing to you, and that the thousands of people that came on the street to, to, to uh, uh, express that dissatisfaction with you means nothing to you, and that the same people could have used other harsher means that would, that would uh, 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 go against our uh, democratic rules, and you are saying that me taking a peaceful protest, my right to demonstrate, means nothing to you? How can we sit in a country That's the whereby problem. you can think that you are the alpha and omega of everything? You see, we have an erroneous system when people come into power that they think they can use the power, the, the systems to perpetuate themselves in power. But this myth was broken in what, 2000, 2008? 2016, it will be broken in 2024. It will be broken in 2024 because when the will of the people is greater than you putting systems to try and stop us, it is not possible. So I joined this demonstration horrified at the fact that a district officer sitting in, 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 in the Futu can change something in a, 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 a formula. And, you, and, and that does not send shock waves through your spine, through your system. You do not shiver at the thought that this thing can take place, that you can ride a truck through the systems that you have. A whole truck can pass through the system without detection. That is what we are fighting for, to strengthen the institution of the EC. The audit will strengthen the institution of the EC itself and further give strong confidence for all of us to know that they are the final stop. They are the buck. They will be the people that will make pronouncements. But if you cannot even conduct a balloting a, a, a properly, eh, it, it erodes, it further goes to erode the confidence that citizens are supposed to have in that institution called the Electoral Commission. Well, and, so, and so you see that, 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 that a comedy of errors that they keep committing because of a poster that says that I will not listen to anybody. My way is the only way, and you can take wherever and go wherever you want. It cannot be so. You understand? A lot of right. times when we talk about the legalese and all of those matters, you have to talk about the social consciousness, the social will of the people. And when the people rise up and they are asking questions, you must listen. Because you are a creation of the Constitution, you must listen to the people. And you're, 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 you're calling autonomous, every institution, I'm autonomous, I'm autonomous. You are not autonomous. You okay. are subject to the, uh, 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 to the dictates of the people. And the people are rising up to say that, they, 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 you see, this is not an NDC issue. This is not an NDC issue. I joined it because of the principle. Look, the PPP were shivering when issues came out about, 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 about the preliminary audit that the NDC has spent its time and money to do. And it's not their job. You see, that's the thing that you're not understanding. Though. The primary job of political parties is not to come and do your job for you. If we are able to detect something and tell you, it's just to set you on a certain tangent that, hey, I'm sleeping, but my legs are outside. So let me, you should have called an internal uh, uh, my meeting, put the agency on it, okay. and ask how can we solve and resolve this matter. Thank you. Not take a posture that goes against people and it goes uh, people trying to correct a wrong that you have committed. Well, that you well, have committed. Well, thank you. You joined the demonstration. The persons who put all of this together um, with like-minded minds is the NDC. You've hit the streets, sent a petition Seven days ultimatum expires in the next four, three, four days. So then, what next? Okay, so you see, Alfred, I think that um, this point ought to be made very strongly. Mm -hmm. When the NDC made the request for the audit, it was not a request founded on vexatious claims. Mm -hmm. It was not a request founded on mischief. It was a request founded on real evidence. And I just want to do a very practical demonstration of it. You, Alfred, this morning, if I accuse you more directly 
that Alfred, you are keeping something in your hand. That is why you have your face closed. What would be your defense? Your defense would be to what? To open it up. Sunshine. Because what the sunshine would do is to ensure transparency. Is to let everybody know that your palm is as clean and white and that you are not holding anything. If in the midst of all this conversation, you still insist that you keep your fist closed, what does it tell you? You have something hiding. Our claim is very simple. Alfred, I want you to do a walk with me through the law. The Parliament of the Republic of Ghana, hmm? and this was a law promoted by the Electoral Commission itself. He went to Parliament and got Parliament to pass what is known as the Public Elections Regulation, CI 126. I just want to read aspect of it. Sorry, CI 127. Public Election Regulation. It reads, Regulation 22. A registered voter who before an election is resident for not less than 12 months in a constituency other than that in which the registered voter is registered may apply to the returning officer of the constituency where the registered voter is resident for the name of that registered voter to be entered on the transfer voters list. That is the law. May apply to have his name transferred. So when you have a situation where 25 people can have their name transferred from Tamale to Pusiga without an application, prima facie evidence that the Electoral Commission is not prepared to comply with its own regulation. Is it 25 or 38? Is it 25 or 38? No, I mean, I'm just using it okay. as an example. All right. We know that for the law of evidence, evidence is not counted. You weigh the evidence. Mm. Nobody counts evidence. And that is why you can go to court with 10 witnesses. Somebody will go to court with only one. The 10 witnesses will come with inconsistent testimony of the same fact. One person is consistent with his testimony. The judge will believe that one person and discard those 10 witnesses that you have paraded in court. Okay. So we say evidence is not counted. You weigh it. Mm. Now, having said this, if you look at the dictates of Regulation 22 of CI 127, what it tells you is that the Electoral Commission so motto cannot even do a transfer. Yeah. The that transfer must be founded on an application. Mm. And so where evidence is even established, even by one, that the Electoral Commission so motto on its own accord can transfer people without an application, it tells you that the system is compromised. Poros. The system is porous. And in those circumstances, even you, the Electoral Commission, without prompting, should be the one asking for an audit of your own exactly. system. Exactly. Exactly. Now look, Kenya, in the year 2017, 4th of April, mm -hmm. they appointed KPMG to audit their own register. That's Kenya. And guess what? In 2022, again, the Kenyan Electoral Commission permitted an audit by KPMG. Now, do you know what KPMG found upon the audit? That unauthorized electoral uh, officials in Kenya had access to their database. Wow. Now, mm -hmm. if you have a situation where you can transfer as many as 38 people to a constituency, and do you know why the transfer by law must be done based on application. And the application is not even enough. <coughs> if you further go to Regulation 22.2, mm -hmm. Regulation 22.2 now says that 
The, the transfer is not even automatic. You must demonstrate proof. Either you have been transferred to go and work in a different place, and you must show the proof. You must even show your tenancy agreement before you can have the transfer done. Do you know why? Because the transfer is a potent tool for gerrymandering. Mm. So you see, the MPP had come to the conclusion that no, for, for, yes, so when you say gerrymandering, basically what you are doing is that you want to influence parliamentary outcomes. How do you do that? In the year 2012, an MPP MP won with three votes. So when you move 38, it's enough to change an outcome. And I'll tell you why, Pusiga. So in the 2020 election, after the outcome, NDC won the Pusiga seat. The MPP candidate took the MPP MP to court. And in fact, I was the lawyer for the NDC MP. I see. And they were challenging 68 votes. <laughs> you understand? So 68 was enough to change the outcome. In Pusiga. In Pusiga. So tactically, if you can get electoral commission officials to transfer even 500 votes into Pusiga, you want to believe that that is enough to change the outcome there. Mm. So this thing is deliberate, intentional, by the Electoral Commission to change parliamentary election outcome. This is even where it gets worse. As we speak, the NDC presented to the Electoral Commission that over 15,000 people on the transfer voters registers list, you know that they have been transferred, but you don't know where they were transferred from. You don't have an idea. You don't have an idea. And look, the Electoral Commission thought they could play fast on us. Many days ago, the EC had asked us to present a pen drive. So they would give us the provisional voters register. We insisted, insisted, insisted. They never did. Mm -hmm. Guess what they did? They waited a day before the exhibition, then they gave us the provisional register. With a view that we will not be able to thoroughly what? Examine it before the exhibition day the next day. Our team of cracked IT people sat overnight and went through the entire register and found out 3,000 people deleted without any evidence. 15,000 people, that is how we were able to detect all the discrepancies. They never anticipated that we could do that or whatever. And so if you listen to Samuel Tete, he said he is shocked about the conduct of the NDC and that previously there were even trees and others on the... How come that we couldn't detect? In fact, that's the most useless mm. statement I've mm. heard. Do you I know was, why? I was shocked. Do you know why? No. Oh. Samuel Tete was the director of electoral service. Mm -hmm. So he knew that there were trees and others on the mm -hmm. register and did nothing about it. Samuel Tete, you gave a very bad account of yourself. In 1992... D -D. In 1992, when Afarijan picked you into the Electoral Commission, he saw how useful, technically competent. Why have you allowed the, uh, the MPP to compromise you? Yeah. Is it because the coup to get you to NCC didn't work? And so you have decided to work for the MPP now, Mr. Mm -hmm. Samoji. We don't it know that. No, 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 I'm telling you. It appears so. For the intervention of a key MPP M uh, uh, MP and former minister, is that the reason why suddenly the very principle, because if you look at the Electoral Commission, the mm. people with the technical expertise in terms of the commission itself, is what it is. Jemensa has no knowledge about elections. Mm. Bosman Asari was teaching political science. He has no idea about election management. <laughs> he said if we are an existential uh, the, 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 uh, the reverend minister, who has also been put on the commission, oh, uh, there's uh, a reverend. Preaching at Asasi Radio. Yes, yes. the Asasi Radio uh, preacher. preacher. I, she, I, I she has no knowledge about election. So if you look at the commission con selection. currently constituted, the person who has experience and technical knowledge of election management is Amotete. And this Samotete, over many years' experience with the Electoral Commission, one would expect that when 
persons like James and who obviously are incompetent when it comes to election matters, they can rely on your technical experience. You come out there and say, oh, now the NDC has taken this matter serious. And that they were traced previously and the NDC could not detect it. Mm. Can you imagine, Alfred, you asked a very it's important simple. question when my Lender Senior was here. Listen carefully. If we have an election openly, would you permit that the counting should be done in a room? <laughs> we, 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 we voted openly. Mm -hmm. Now, when it got to the counting, the sorting, and others, so let's go to the room and oh, go yeah. and do it. So, assuming that the NDC presented the evidence to you, and you claim that you have done the correction, is that not the more reason why you should do a re-exhibition? Now, where is the evidence that the claim that you have done correction is in fact true? Where is the evidence? And so, there's an important issue that I need to raise. Or you round up for me. Yes, mm -hmm. whilst rounding up. See, NDC, we know what is going on in the EC. Madame Jane Benson decided to appoint two IT consultants. The first is Dr. Ofori AJ. Mm -hmm. The second person is Yakwachi. Mm. Yakwachi, father, from 2008 until he passed recently, was a personal assistant to Nana Dodanku Ekufado and Fokwachi. Mm. Was he the one who was convicted? Yes. The narcotics case. Yes, the narcotics, the narcotics case. Yes. Ah. That's the son. How? Oh. And for Kwachi. Ah, the narcotics case. So what's your point? Case. So what's your what's, what, 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 Yes, that's so the son. So what's, what's your, what's your ah. point Yaquachi. exactly? What? what? And for Egana. And for Kwachi. That's Akufuado's no, direct no. relation. Who was his person? The son is now an IT consultant to the Electoral Commission. Hey. And you say, NDC, go and sleep. We'll sleep and our legs will be outside. Okay. Mm. Hey. Well, and no, no. So I beg you, if I can just in, uh, uh, round up on this. In a minute. See, I need to, I need to, I need to, in a minute, I need you to You see, up. you see, uh, 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 Professor Stephen Asari Kukwaza mm. made yeah. an interesting point. He said, look, a court in Ghana has found out that both up, okay, mm -hmm. did they have a liveness test? What's a liveness test? It's an authenticator to know that the person's biometrics are actually true and not false. Because for biometrics, what you do not want is false IDs. So you have a situation where a progressive judge said it at the circuit court, said the name at the circuit court in Adenta, now makes the point that let the data commission, the data protection commission, audit the software that board is using. Why, why would, do you think a judge will do that? To ensure the accuracy, to ensure that people can rely on that. That is what progressive judges do. Okay. And so, if you have a situation where the complaint is not only NDC, I saw Nana of the PPP at the demo. Yes. I have also heard, With my national and, and, and I need to say this, possibly today you should add this chief mm. to your list. Mm -hmm. The Go of So Man Yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. The Go of So Man mm. had openly said, mm. look, there is, it's important to have this audit. And you know why the audit is important? Two or two or so. The electoral mm. commissions hold this thing is transparency, fairness, and integrity. How do we establish that transparency? It's by opening your system. What we are finding out, which is even more scary, is that it is beginning to look like there are persons in the Electoral Commission office who can, on their own accord, mm. do transfers. Yes. yes. Now, this is where it is even more worrying. Mm. What are the protocols for entry and exit? Mm -hmm. Do you get my point? You, because you, you see, you, at TV3, you ask, you ask for the, the, yes, those no, but the point I'm making them. is that the point I'm making is that at TV3 here, if you have a system, you should have password and the code and the protocols, login protocols, so that if you, Alfred, entered the system here on TV3 uh, 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 premises, 
Somebody should be able to see that today, Alfred has just entered the system here. Yes. If somebody is entering the system in Dubai, there must be a mechanism to track that somebody is doing that. So if an electoral commission person can do 38 transfers without James and knowing, but for NDC to raise that issue, how many more of said transfers have been done that Jane Mensah is not aware? Okay. So the audit is even good for Madame Jane Mensah herself. Yes, that's what I said. They have it is an, it's an issue that she herself needs. It is called system integrity. It is called process integrity. Because you want the system to have the necessary integrity that all the stakeholders can rely on. Now, so, I want to so, so, no, no, There was a question I was find out. The, in the audit you are asking mm. for, in what form is this audit? And are the political, are the political parties also going to have a representation in the process? Or is it just about the NDC just asking for it? You and see, the others who are quiet about it as well, thinking about how this audit is going to be? I always, I always maintain that the NDC midwived the 1992 constitution. And so we have a responsibility to protect it. The two women who appeared before mm. King Solomon, the one that had the actual, went through the nine okay. months, was I, I, willing to present. I, I, now, do you I, I, know actually, something? Do you know something? We believe that an audit with only NDC does not fulfill the constitutional principles of probity, accountability, and transparency. So we want a situation where you journalists who have a rep there, the political party, the major political parties who have a rep there, in fact, if Nana Santini or Tunfo even want one of his or chairmates to be there, they should have a rep from the National House of Chief. Yes. So that at the end of the day, when all is said and That's done, well. mm -hmm. we would all know that when the NDC requested for an audit of the voters register, Kwejo was a witness, Ama was a witness, Susan and so was a witness, and the NDC consistent with that, you recall, even when we made the initial prayer to the Electoral Commission, we asked the Electoral Commission for what? Live streaming of the conversation. Who wants to hide evidence by asking that it should be telecasted? Mm. Okay. That has been the principle of the NDC. I hear the MPP recently do a press conference and say, oh, NDC, why are we calling for an audit? Nana Dodanko Kufado call for an audit? In fact, I recall when they called for the audit, a listening electoral commission chairperson, Charlotte Osei, mm -hmm. constituted justice VCRAC crab mm -hmm. committee. Do you know that even when that committee had a composition of five members, the MPP objected to three of the members. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the justice VCRAC crab committee presented this report and said the request for an entirely new register was not founded. However, there must be an audit with the participation of all the stakeholders. And that was done. Okay. So the bizarre claim by the MPP that they will not permit an audit of the voters register underscores the fact that they and the Electoral Commission have no. conspired to no, manipulate no, no the election and no. that would definitely not happen look nobody nobody i repeat <laughs> is going to permit madame jemensa bosman asari apiahini or whoever to manipulate the 2024 you, you, you made your point it will so happen. You, you made your point so the npp in that press conference also indicated they have also identified errors themselves in the limited voter ex register that was exhibited they would present their findings to the Electoral Commission. And uh, Professor Kukwa, sorry, I have to leave us, but I'm at yeah. on this bit because in the end, what the NDC has detailed in their petition mm -hmm. has presented to the Electoral Commission. The fundamental question is, if the Commission decides not to, and the Apiakubi says, resort to the courts, mm -hmm. explore the other options, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. employ for instance, the right to information, mm -hmm. so as to demand if the EC says 
it has corrected the errors that the NDC says they, they presented, mm -hmm. but then they are not showing the corrected errors. Mm -hmm. What other measures or means can be employed to get those answers that the NDC was asking? Maybe a quick no, one. I lost the last mm -hmm. part. I feel like we saying resort to the courts, okay, to get your results. Yes. Okay, you're saying apart from the court, what else? Which other means? Oh, so it, before the court, the most expeditious one is the public demonstration. Okay. Yes, it's more potent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? And very expeditious because with the demonstrations that happened last Tuesday, 17th um, mm -hmm. September, you can see that the whole country, Massive. and indeed, yes, the world at large <coughs> was, I mean, uh, attention was drawn to the issue at hand. And so that put the EC under so much scrutiny. Mm -hmm. They lost a lot of reputation. So when you've suffered a lot of reputational damage, the first reaction, if you are honest, is to do something to remedy the damage, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, but you know, court processes, you file this one, response, etc. that could be weeks. That's the earliest. You remember even the uh, PPP case, the Indum case? Yes, mm -hmm. 2016, you went, right? It yeah, took, almost. by the time you were done, it was about a month minimum. Well, yes, one month. They, yeah, mm. but the demonstration but it is was quick. November six. Mm. Exactly. And it was enough for us to have the election on the seventh. Okay. Uh -huh. You that's, see. That's, uh, yes. So the uh, public uh, show of uproar, the public show of uh, this uh, dissatisfaction, revulsion, etc., is likely to get better results and more expeditious if the uh, election management body is honest. But this EC is not one that is showing itself to be honest. But nonetheless, I support the NDC's action. Oh, and I was there, live. Yeah, oh, I went. I, I went to support because as a citizen, I can't sit aloof. No, not with the kind of uh, looting that we've uh, suffered over the past eight years. I will sit for another looting uh, to happen. No. No, 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 no. So I went there. And then, you know, I was there when this National Cathedral thing, the, the later on, the, 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 the hoarding was broken. And then citizens went in and swam in the pool, right? <clears throat> uh, yes. Uh, you know, that, that's a, a side, uh, this, yeah. uh, what do you call it? I think it was like <laughs> a bonus or dessert. Uh, yeah. And then just in passing, let me mention this. There's this joke that I may call it the joke of the year. This morning, I saw something, a, a small clip. Uh, a gentleman interviewing a lady. That one cross her in there. Oh. And then the lady said, oh, me, my church is still under construction. <laughs> then they said, ah, which church is that? Then the young lady said, the National Cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Eh? Yes, that's what I'm quite sorry. I said, be me, my church is still under construction. No, so no, can, no. Can, can, can you imagine? <laughs> so it means that for the next 10 years, that lady is not going to go, go to court. And okay. She's not going to go to church because she's waiting for the yeah, national. 10 years. Yes. Yes, but let's just say at least in the first year, I can see, I can, I'm very certain that in 10 years it will not be done, at least at this rate. So the young lady says, no, she, she's waiting for the national cathedral. That is her church. So until it is built, there will be no check service, right? Mm. That's it. So okay. coming back, you see that, look, the demo was good. The demo was good. I know we are getting pent up as well. So when you walk like that, in a way, and then you have the opportunity to voice your concerns, it helps you heal a little bit. So what we can say is that the EC must do something about this situation. And also, Mr. Kansi, let's mention with all the force we can. Listen. Yao Kwachi has to leave the EC. Yao Kwachi has to leave the EC because you can't appoint him as an IT consultant when his father is, uh, was a right hand man to Ekufuadu. Direct. Direct. Thank you for the word. And with that narcotics conviction. Mm. Wrap up. And with that narcotics conviction, wow. you see, that's how come those days they used to, you know, uh, mention the president's name in yeah, things well, like well, this. Well, 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 yes. Well. If you go yes. on uh, Ghana yeah, web yes. right now, yes. Yes. Well, I mean, no, you can't point. have, you know, narcotics True. often also generate issues of national security, etc. So with his father having been convicted of narcotics contributing to national security chaos, and then you are uh, rewarding his son with such an appointment. Why? I don't know IT experts. Look, I keep saying that. Uh, when a, a MPP was in opposition, what they said was that to appoint an EC chair, they wanted the, uh, the announcement to be made public, 
then everybody who felt qualified could apply then there would be an assessment panel that would be that would do its work in public exactly. and be broadcast on tv to select all these high-ranking ec officials and now you are using it as a means of rewarding sons of ex-narcotics convicts i mean that what kind of democracy is this? banana republic so Yaokwachi has to leave the EC. There's Dr. Oforeje has to leave. Edu, you have mentioned the preacher at the uh, Asasi radio, the yeah. lady. I don't know. Uh, apart from Salima Ahmed Tijani, uh, you have the uh, uh, Reverend Ekuya Ofori Bwatin. Uh -huh. Reverend Ekuya Ofori Bwatin. And, and, and you see, and you then Dr. none of them has any experience okay. on it. Yes. So yes. The, the, uh, it the, yes. The, 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 there's a question that um, Professor Kweku Asari asked, which I want to uh, quick take on because mm -hmm. he's joining us again we lost him briefly yeah he is making the proposal that lawmakers must act swiftly in passing legislation that ensures periodic independent audits of our electoral system is it the way to go oh absolutely yeah. absolutely it's a no-brainer so, as i've said you know <laughs> the country is changing you know. Nowadays, when I walk around, I think, yeah, we are becoming more conscious, all right? Citizens are beginning to assert themselves. Yeah. So, yes, that's the way to go. Okay. Independent. Independent audit. So, they've mm -hmm. mentioned the Kenyan examples, right? And all the troubles they had over there, right? So, mm -hmm. for us, it's the way to go because okay. we are supposed to lead the Black Star of Africa. That is what Kwame Nkrumah meant for us, right? So, right. this EC, apart from this independence, so you see the word is independence, independence, independence. So, let's start it right now with the removal of Yao Kwachi and Dr. Ofurie J being okay. also part of the uh, this in EC uh, uh, electoral IT. register. I, uh, yeah. okay. There are IT persons in the EC there, Dr. Ofurie J and then Yao Kwachi. Okay. Please. Well, uh, Professor Kweko, sorry, just a few minutes on this because that points that you make about the way forward after this conversation the long-term or short to medium-term effect of this should not end after the 2024 election there has to be some permanent measures and structures procedures put in place to ensure that if this should happen again it will not be at the beck and call of a political party for that matter we must have lawmakers acting swiftly now in your view in passing a legislation that would ensure periodic independent audits of our electoral system that's a consideration you want to be made yes yes absolutely and i myself i'll draft uh, a bill and then actively try to pursue it because it's you know it, it's it's overdue uh, kenya has a law by the way and there are losses quadrennially that is every four years there has to be an independent audit uh, normally kpng uh, will do that audit and when you read those audit reports they are very very informative and the ec the uh, ec equivalent of the ec in kenya has been the biggest beneficiary of these audits. Mm. Mm. And, 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 and I've Pro just to add to mm -hmm. the, the point. You see, mm -hmm. when it comes to legislating, for instance, we have introduced electronic systems into our elections, the biometrics and ha what have you. We do not have beyond the CIs. How the, uh, the register itself is managed, mm -hmm. who can assess it? Yeah. What are the protocols for access? What are the login protocols? You need to have legislation. Because okay. as we speak now, whether Mr. Kufado has access to our register, you don't know. Whether you, as we have this discussion, you have access to our register and you can do transfers without anybody knowing. We don't know. Okay. So you need to have legislation so that when people breach it, you can deal with them. The guy in Pusika who did the transfer without the authority of the Electoral Commission, that is an illegal conduct because it contravenes Regulation 22 yes. or CR 127. But what are the penal consequences? Thank you. For Edith, such Edith, illegal conduct. Emmanuel Aboyaja says very important point made by Professor Kwekwasari. Periodic audits of voters register is very necessary. Um, this one here says, in the meantime, in the interest of transparency and accountability, 
um, this call for the Electoral Commission to allow an independent audit of its register should be seen as a, a bipartisan and non-political call by all your guests who have spoken this morning. This one here from Maoli Anyete says, I admire the principled position of the NPP guest on your show um, this morning, not being against the cause for an audit, but his counter argument is what also you say raises uh, questions. Brilliant submission by your guest this morning, but practically superficial in implementation. The EC is a creature of the constitution with entrenched and guaranteed independent provisions. A subsidiary legislation is to, to independently audit the work of an independent constitutional body like the EC will add to our problem of not always dealing with issues from the root. Professor Kukwaza, that's, that's a response to, to, to you, and I don't know if you have a quick take on that. that yeah, uh, I think I've already addressed that. Merely because a body is independent, it doesn't mean it doesn't have to be audited. If you look at the Constitution, the Constitution says all public entities are subject to audit. And similarly, if you look at the right. Audit Service Act, Section 16, it says the Auditor General can do operational audit, compliance audits, and so on. And okay. I've already given the account of the 2018 special audit where it was found that the EC was selling our data to a private company. 2018, every, anyone can Google that. There was a special audit by the Auditor General of the Electoral Commission system. And they found out that the Data Privacy Act was perhaps being violated because our information was being sold without our knowledge, without our approval. Okay. So, 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 so the, the, this idea that if you are independent, you are not accountable is totally misplaced. There's nothing in the Constitution that mm -hmm. suggests that the judiciary, which is an independent body, or any of the independent bodies are not subject to audit. In Thank fact, because they are independent, that's the more reason why they should be, they, 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 their activities should be audited. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Professor Stephen Kweku Asari, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I do appreciate your time. Thanks so much, Alfred. Appreciate it. It's a Democracy and Development Fellow um, in Justice, uh, the Center for Democratic Development, CDD, uh, Professor Kweku Asari, thank you so much. This one here says, uh, famous to me, Aqua. When and the Apiakubi was the student of Afarijan. There was no NDC. He says, thank you very much for your message. This one here from Musa Batwa in Aswasi says, Alfred, the disqualification of some candidates by the Electoral Commission without a thorough examination of their papers raises concerns about sincerity and fairness. This suggests an underlying agenda to favor some political parties. However, no level of ballot manipulation should be countenance. Hadi from Pig Farm. Did I hear the MPP saying they will demonstrate if the EC agreed to the NDC's proposal? What will be the MPP's reason for hitting the streets? What will be the caption or perhaps, he says, the message to the international community? This one here uh, from Theophilos, who sends us a message as well. He says, good morning, great conversation this morning. I would like to inquire from your panel, whether a sitting president can prevent can be prevented from appointing an electoral commission chairperson and officials. This could help alleviate conflicts of interest. Mm -hmm. If the IEA and other elect electoral agencies were to collaborate, interested neutral persons could be elected to become yeah. the EC chairperson. You say, thank you. And I have some updates from the accident that I just announced from uh, one of the police chiefs watching us right now. He says, so far, eight people, mm. unfortunately, have been confirmed dead as a result of the accident that I just announced a few minutes ago uh, on the Suhum Road. Eight people confirmed dead so far. The Kumasi uh, direction-bound fuel tanker Jesus. blasted a tire, mm. veered to the Accra-bound lane, and crashed with a high-occupancy commercial bus. Mm. So far... Unfortunately, eight lives lost.